the well, as efficient as a solar cell. Why photophysics is different in water compared to films is something which is um, not understood. But of course, water is a, a far more hydrophilic, a hydrophilic and polar environment. And that probably has a significant impact on the difference in function. The last thing I want to touch on is the role of metals in these photocatalysts. When people first started synthesizing and reporting function with the conjugated polymer photocatalysts, um, it was not obvious whether they needed a metal to achieve function or whether the photocatalyst, the, the polymer itself, was catalyzing proton reduction. In the carbon nitrides, we know we need to add um, a metal to achieve function, but in these conjugated polymers, it wasn't clear. Um, again, Ian's group um, took a, a rather classic polymer, um, which um, I imagine g would rather like, F8BT, from her from days when she was worried about light emission. Um, and, if, um, and the beauty here is that um, you can use um, uh, chromatography to remove the, the metal content of a polymer like this. And as you do this, you find that its function as a photocatalyst plummets. It was clear that you needed and, and of course, the metal here is a metal which comes from the synthesis in those reactions which Martin talked about earlier on um, this afternoon. And so if you take out the residual catalyst from the synthesis, then F8BT no longer works. We've been trying to understand why that is and what's going on. And so we can see some photophysics here, for example, of um, F8BT particles where well, um, as a function of palladium content. And what you can see is if you don't have any palladium, you see long lived electrons sitting on F8BT in the presence of a whole scavenger to take the, the holes away. But F, in the unpurified material, the electrons don't sit on the F8BT, they sit on the palladium. This is the spectra of, of reduced palladium, um, which is clearly showing that those um, the, 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 in this system, the electrons end up on the palladium to drive the proton reduction. Rather interestingly, this palladium has quite a large impact on the photophysics. And so, for example, um, when you purify um, the F8BT, the exton lifetime doubles, which is clearly indicating that the palladium is quenching the excitons in this polymer. That's um, relevant for these photocatalysts. It may also have wider relevance for organic solar cells and photodetectors because most of the materials which we use in, these, in, in our solar cells and photodetectors have not been purified to take the metal out of that material. It's also clear that this quenching by the palladium was not fast compared to the whole scavenging. Whole scavenging of this material is, is two nanoseconds, not 10 picoseconds, because there's no, um, this is a hydrophobic polymer, no cell phone groups to aid that whole scavenging. Maybe most relevantly, if we compare the function of the P10 and F8BT, then of course, the um, improved whole scavenging by P10, this is my, pretty much my last slide, uh, Nicola, so I'm going to be ending soon. Um, the, 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 the whole scavenging is far more efficient for P10 because of their cell phone groups, which enables far more long lived electrons. And that's why P10 works better than F8BT. But of course, neither of them work as well as those bulk edge junctions I showed earlier. Um, but when we look at where the electrons go, it's rather striking. The electrons in a typical F8BT unpurified go onto the, the palladium. In P10, they don't. They stay on the polymer, even though this P10 polymer has more palladium than F8BT. And we've understood this because um, the P10 um, is rather a poor electron transport material. At least that's the most likely understanding. As we change the palladium content in P10, which is much harder to do because it's much harder to process, it's not, it's not a solid or polymer, then the kinetics of this electron decay change. And so what we imagine is that these electrons are decaying by electrons finding their way to a palladium to drive the catalysis of proton reduction. But that happens rather slowly compared to the actually the time scale of the proton reduction catalysis on a palladium. So I hope I've given you so, uh, so, um, some thoughts about why polymers are interesting um, for as photocatalyst materials. I must finish particularly by thanking all the group who've, who've done the work and particularly my, my past, um, past and present group members and all the various collaborators we've had both for materials and for modelling. And with that, I will leave you, if I can, with some conclusions. But um, 
it seems that carbon based and polymer uh, and polymer materials are working better as photocatalysts than I think anyone expected. Um, and they're showing quite promising stabilities and efficiencies. Their function, however, is very poorly understood. And there's clear differences between how we can understand the function of something like carbon nitride, oops, sorry, and um, a more classical conjugated polymer. These um, are far less tunable, have far less traps, those, those are far more traps that trapping aids charge separation, aids the generation of long-lived charges, but of course it loses energy. And trying to modulate those traps is the key to the function of a carbon nitride. In the polymers, the problem is the exciton. We conjugate the polymers, just as we understand so well on organic solar cells. If you want to get something useful out of conjugated polymer, you've got to separate your exciton. And that's not always so easy. Um, one pathway is blockade junctions, and that I suspect is going to be the pathway which we're going to see much more work on going forwards. With that, 